Good morning, living faith. Happy Resurrection Day. Yes, He is alive, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First Peter says, Be praise to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us a new birth. Christ the Lord. Christ the Lord is risen today. Hallelujah. Son of man and angels say, Hallelujah. Raise your joys and triumph high. Hallelujah. Sing ye heavens and earth reply. Love redeeming, work is done. Hallelujah. Part the fight, the battle won. Hallelujah. Death is painful, bid him rise. Hallelujah. Christ has opened paradise. Hallelujah. He is risen. Hallelujah. Our sins have been forgiven now. We have power over the grave. Christ the Lord is risen today. Yes, He is alive. Lift again our glorious King. Hallelujah. Where old death is now thy sing. Hallelujah. Dying once I so say, Hallelujah, where thy victory o'er the grave. Oh, Hallelujah, He is risen. Hallelujah, our sins have been forgiven now. We have power over the grave. Christ the Lord is risen today. Let all creation sing, Hallelujah. The King is risen. Glory to the name of our risen Lord. Let all the earth proclaim, Hallelujah. Our sins forgiven. Glory to your name forever. Christ the Lord is risen today. Oh, we bless you, Lord. We love you. Hallelujah. Amen. How many know that the God we serve is alive? He is risen. God is not dead. He is surely alive. Let love explode. Let love explode and bring the day to life. I love so much to see a revolution somehow. Man. Lift your voice, Kurt. Let love explode. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. 
I'd love so much to see a revolution somehow. Now I'm lost in the freedom. And this world I've overcome. My God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's Living on the inside, roaring like a lion, rolling, rolling, rolling like a lion. Let hope arise, let hope arise and make the darkness hide. My faith is dead, I need a resurrection. Somehow, now I'm lost in your freedom, and this world I'll overcome. My God's not dead; He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead; He's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. He's rolling. Rolling, rolling like a lion. Rolling, rolling. Let heaven roll in my above. Come take the crown with the sound of revival. Let heaven roll in my above. Come take the crown. My God, He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. God's not dead, He's surely alive. He's living on the inside, roaring like a lion. He's rolling, He's rolling, He's rolling like a lion. He's rolling, He's rolling, He's rolling like a lion. Take it home. All honor, all glory, all praise to you, Lord, our risen Savior. We love you. Oh, Yeah. 
You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome, you overcome. Jesus wonderful. Now this is e this is Resurrection Sunday. If you got two hands, you got to put them together because he is some kind of wonderful. Amen. Oh wow. Well, go ahead if you got to do it, do it. Well, I don't need a whole lot of money. I don't need a big fine car. I got everything that a man could want. I got more than I could ask for. I don't have to run around. I don't have to stay out all night. Cause I got me a sweet, a sweet loving Savior. And through Him I'm saved and sanctified. Well, my Jesus, He's alright. Well, my Jesus is the way, truth, and life. Don't you know that it's some kind of wonderful, my Jesus is. Some kind of wonderful, my Jesus is. Some kind of wonderful, hallelujah. Come on, Paul. When I gave my life to Jesus, you know he set my soul on fire. Jesus, I thank you. Blessing me, filling me with Holy Ghost fire. I think about all His goodness. God, lift my hands and praise. Tell the world He's the Lord. I'm not ashamed to say. Well, my Jesus, He's all right. Well, my Jesus is the way, truth, and life. Don't you know that it's some kind of wonderful, some kind of wonderful, my Jesus is, some kind of wonderful, hallelujah. Now is there anybody here that knows the Jesus of which I sing? There's got to be somebody here in living faith of that to save by the King of Kings. 
I can I get a witness? 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 I'm talking about my Jesus. Talking about the Savior, kind of talking about the risen King, kind of talking about my Lord. Some kind of wonderful. Some kind of wonderful. Amen. <laughs> Take your seats. Take your seats. Oh, Jesus is some kind of wonderful. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Oh. Hey, I got a good report for you. Jesus is alive. Amen. Welcome to Resurrection Sunday. It's good to have you. Well, be sure to look up at the screen during the offering time. You'll see all the upcoming events we have, especially a very special one for the children, moms and dads. Check it out up there. Also, a, the new newsletter is out. So I hope you all got one. If you didn't, you need to grab a hold of it. It tells you everything that's going on here at Living Faith. We're so excited about what God is doing here. I tell you, at 8.30 service, five people received the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, that's always good news. I, I said that's always good news. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Now, <clears throat> ushers, come on forward, please. Tonight, yes. Boy, I've been asked it maybe 50 times. Are you having a service tonight? The answer is absolutely yes. We're having a, a and I'm preaching tonight. Hey, you're going to like this. And Dwayne, are you here tonight with me? Who's here tonight? Dave is here tonight. Oh, Dave. He's good on the guitar and he's, he's good on the eyes, girls. So is that okay to say that? Well, they used to say that about me, but <laughs> I don't know what happened, Fabio. <laughs> Amen. Well, if I wasn't supposed to say that, forgive me. Anyway, Dave will be here tonight leading praise and worship. I'll be here bringing a message about the power of the resurrection. You don't want to miss it if you can come. Glad to have you. Let's pray. Get your tithe and your offering ready. This is the special Easter offering. Uh, Resurrection Sunday, tithe, make it your best gift. Jesus gave his best when he sent his only begotten son. Amen. Father, we thank you for each and every one here. We celebrate the risen Savior, your son. We thank you and praise you. Now, as we receive the tithes and offerings, multiply it like the loaves and the fishes. I pray that there would be abundance in your house in Jesus name Amen I cast my mind on Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior that cursed tree 
That's a great song. He is the risen king. Praise the Lord. So many wonderful things happening. Who's ready for an Easter miracle? Anybody here ready to be touched by the master? And I know that upsets some people when you say Easter. Happy Easter, happy Easter. They get upset. So let me say this. Happy Easter, happy Easter, happy Easter. <laughs> well, it's not in the Bible. All right, get ready to get schooled. Acts 12, verse 4, just real quick, real quick. Acts 12, verse 4, and I know, see, the enemy likes to take something of God and attach pagan things to it. That's what he does. He does it real good. He did it to Christmas, Santa Claus, elves, all this stuff. And he'll do it to Easter. We celebrate. Uh, uh, yes, I like saying Resurrection Sunday better than Easter Sunday. Yeah, I do, but I don't have a problem with Easter Sunday. Here it says in the Bible, Acts 12, 4. Go ahead, Kyle. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quatrains of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Yeah, notice the capital E. So this, is, this word Easter now in the NIV, New American Standard and such, it says uh, Passover. So the two are interchangeable, Easter, Passover. How many like Passover? Well, of course, Jesus is our Passover. It also means dawn, D-A-W-N. Of course, they attach a pagan goddess to it, but it literally means in itself it means dawn. It means the break of day. It means early in the morning, very early in the morning. And it was Sunday Easter morning, the dawn, that Jesus was raised from the dead. It says that in Matthew 28, 1. Okay, school is out. So just don't panic. We believe in the risen Savior. Yes, the kids are out there gathering Easter eggs. Why, you want to go out there too? Oh, just lay an egg. All right. <laughs> Amen. And they're having a good time, but everything is balanced. Yes, they're gathering some candy and things like that to enjoy and have fun. And then they're going to hear a resurrection, a resurrection message about Jesus being alive. And he's alive not just for their mom and dad, but Jesus is alive for them too. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And they're going to sing some songs, and it's going to be a great, great time. And no, there's no Easter bunnies running around out there. Okay. Let's look at our scripture. Oh, we have something special for you. Do you all like this, this tomb? Notice if you were here for Good Friday, the stone was in front of the opening, meaning Jesus was buried, Good Friday, crucified and buried. But on Sunday morning here, this Sunday morning, as you walked in, you saw the stone rolled away. And you see that the, st that the tomb is what? Is empty. Is that significant? Yes. This morning's message is entitled, The Empty Tomb. What does it mean? 
So we're going to get into that in a minute. But I want to thank the people that worked hard, the men and the women that gave hours and hours and hours of their time making this what looks like a, a, a tomb with the stone and, and, and everything. It was, it's, it's quite a job well done, wouldn't you say? And as you can see, the light in there and that, hey, it's empty. It's empty. You want to come look? Come here. Come here to look inside. You want to? <laughs> That's just like John. John didn't want to go in either. <laughs> Let's look at John 20. John chapter 20, verses 1 through 8, please. Kyle. The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene, early, when it was yet dark, under the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where he, they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen cloths lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen cloths lie, and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen cloths, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also the other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw and believed. Peter! Hurry, Peter! I'm coming! I know, I know! Hurry, bud! Look, I see the tomb. The stone's been rolled away. I'm here! I'm here! I'm right behind you! I'm here! I'm here! Oh, my God! They're not having ham uh, today. That was great. Thank you, boys. That's the Stack Brothers, ladies and gentlemen, Peter and John. Wow. That really brought it across, didn't it? I mean, after seeing that, you all want to get saved. Amen. Praise God. Well, that's what I'm preaching on this morning, the empty tomb. Because the empty tomb speaks of several things. And I want to talk about a couple of them with you to stir you. And maybe, just maybe, you'll leave here thinking a little bit different, maybe a little bit better, having your belief firmly set in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because it's pivotal. It's pivotal. It's a central truth of our faith, a core belief that cannot be compromised. For, for if we dismiss the literal, physical resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, then everything unravels. Then we preach a lie. We're still in our sins. And we're fools, the Bible says. That's what Paul said when they were saying, he's not alive. That was a spiritual thing that was made up. 
And, and Paul says, if the Lord has not been risen from the dead, then your faith is in vain and we preach a lie. But then he says, indeed, he has been risen from the dead and our sins have been forgiven and we've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb, the empty tomb. You know, there were angels there that morning, early dawn. Amen. Matthew 28, 2 through 7 uh, says something about that. Uh, Matthew 28, verses 2 through 7. By the way, the empty tomb is in all four Gospels, very important aspect of our, of our faith. And we hold on to it dearly, not moving an inch uh, on it, not giving in to any of the naysayers. We believe a believer must believe in the literal, physical resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in an empty tomb. You all believe the tomb is empty? Yeah. Amen. Be because, you see, if the tomb wasn't empty, that means our Lord is dead. That's not good news. Good news is he died for us, shed his blood for us, was buried, and on the third day, he was raised from the dead. Now, that's good news. Amen. Matthew 28, verses 2 through 7, Kyle. And Rhonda, are you with me? Okay. Good girl. All right. Matthew 28, 2 through 7. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord. It didn't. It didn't go that way at 8.30. All right. <laughs> Start again, please. And behold, there was a great earthquake. <laughs> Amen. Keep going. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance so, uh, was like lightning. So did you mention the earthquake? <laughs> did you mention the earthquake? Well, we were almost had it. Keep reading, Kyle. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. Lo, I have told you. Amen. So there's the stage that is set for us to see. At his death, there was an earthquake. And now at, at his resurrection, there's an earthquake. And that earthquake shook the place, the guards fell out in fear, the angel of the Lord came down in the midst of the earthquake, and the angel of the Lord touched the stone, and it rolled away. Now, this stone was massive. Say massive. It would take, it was over two tons in weight, and it would take over 30 men to roll it, to move it. That's significant, and you'll see why in just a minute. And the angel comes in the midst of this earthquake and touches the stone, and it rolls away. Not to let, not to let Jesus out, but to let us in to see that the tomb is empty and the Lord has risen from the grave. Amen and amen. Hallelujah, Jesus is alive. God's not dead. He's surely alive. I don't know where people get that idea from. Time Magazine many years ago, front cover, God is dead. Let me tell you something. God cannot get dead. He can't get dead. 
He's God. He's eternal. He is life. He says, I am the I am, the self-existing one. Well, God died on the cross. Yes, his body, his body died. But Jesus didn't. The Bible says he bowed his head and dismissed his spirit. And his body died and was buried. And on the third day, his body came back to life, resurrected, glorified to die never again. Praise God. And the good news is, because he lives, we shall live as well. That's good news. Tell, turn to somebody and say, that's good news. <clears throat> and the angel said, he's, why, why are you seeking? He's not here. He's not dead. He is risen just like he told you. See, the empty tomb screams of Jesus is alive. If you, could, if you could just have ears to hear, you would hear the tomb, the empty tomb cry, he is alive, he is alive. For inside the empty tomb was two very significant things. Actually, three, including the angels, because they were on the inside and the outside telling those that were coming, the women, the Marys, the different Marys that were coming, and the other women, that he is not here. He is risen from the grave. Let me tell you something about Mary Magdalene. She stuck with the Lord through thick and thin. Even when it wasn't popular to be a Christian, she would not leave his side. For Jesus had delivered her from devils. And he was, she was touched by the master. Did you know something else about Mary Magdalene? She was the one that came and washed our Lord's feet with her hair, with her tears. You know something else about Mary Magdalene, this woman of God? She was the first evangelist, guys. She went to the tomb. And she carried back the message that he's alive. How many know that's an evangelistic message? Oh, man, what a mighty woman. I can't wait to meet her in heaven and talk to her. Hallelujah. Look at Acts 1-3. Acts 1-3. So the tomb is, oh, wait a minute. Before we go there, but go ahead. Let's read it. Go ahead. Let's read that. Acts 1-3. Then I'm going to talk about a couple of things here. Go ahead. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom uh, and of God. Infallible truth is one without error. It's absolute. It's like it's infallible. This is the way it is. This is the truth. This is fact. Nothing added. Nothing subtracted. And he showed himself to many, and we'll see that. But there were two infallible proofs right inside the empty tomb. You remember what they were? We read about it. When Peter and John came, they saw something inside. They saw the linen clothes, remember, lying there. Well, those linen clothes are the ones they wrapped him in when they took his body down from the cross. It was Nicodemus and... Joseph of Arimathea that came and got the body with over 100 pounds of a mixture of all kind myrrh and, and fragrances and alloys and all those things. And they would wrap in these cloths. They called them burial, burial cloths or linen clothes up to the neck. Then they would cover the face of the dead with a napkin. What did they see in there? They saw the burial cloth or the clothes lying still in its folds as if the body just disappeared out of the midst of it and it went flat. They weren't unwound. They weren't torn. They were still in its folds. Do you understand? As if the body had just disappeared. Also, there was a napkin folded 
the face napkin, remember? They would cover from the neck down and then just put a napkin over the face. Many believe that was his tallit. But others, if you study it, it's a burial napkin. It's a head burial cloth. And that was folded nice and neat in a different place. Now, how did it get there? How did it get folded? If Jesus didn't do it. Well, there are some speculations, some stories, some, I call them fairy tales, how Jesus just fainted on the cross, you know, and then they thought he was dead. And when they put him in, they wrapped him and get him all, get him in the tomb, that cold air tomb, revived him, and he got up. Now, let's think about this. And he rolled the stone away, and he left past 16 Roman guards. Now, let me think. He was beaten beyond belief. He lost much of his own blood. A, a spear was put in his side, pronounced dead by the Romans and the priests. Put into a tomb, 30 men rolled a stone in front of the opening, and they believed that he woke up and walked out of there. There's one in the Bible. It's a lie, but there's one in the Bible. And it's found in, <coughs> it's found, it's found, it's found, it's found. Matthew 28, 11 through 15. How the priests paid the Roman guards to lie about it. That his disciples came and stole the body. And that, that <laughs> lie continues even today. That the body was stolen by his disciples. These 11 disciples that are frightened out of their minds. Getting past 16 guards who were sleeping. Really? And moving a two-ton stone and removing the body and then leaving. These things are hard to believe. Isn't it easier just to accept the fact that he was raised by the Spirit, raised by the power of God, resurrected? Of course it is. But yet people refute it, discount it, make up their own theories. Let's read this one right here. Conspiracy theory right here. Matthew 28, 11 through 15. Go ahead, Kyle. Now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. So they cooked up a story to, to make the people believe that uh, the disciples stole the body, got the Roman guards, because the Romans were afraid. If, if they lost that, if, if indeed... Uh, the uh, Jesus got past them, they'd all be ex executed. So they went along with anything, and they were paid off to lie. And that lie continues even today. But the truth is, he is risen. The tomb is empty, and Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is the most important fact that a Christian can embrace. Because if he's dead, we're lost. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the empty tomb pronounces, declares that our salvation is secure. Our salvation is assured. Roman, uh, 1 Peter uh, 1, 3 1 Peter 1, 3, the empty tomb assures us of our salvation and that we have a hope and a future in Christ. And people need that today. There are people miserable because they feel like they have no hope of a better future, 
of a better tomorrow. How many know what I'm talking about? And money doesn't fill that, and, and think drugs doesn't fill that, and, and, and Disneyland doesn't fill that. <laughs> Maybe close, I don't know. What fills it is a relationship with Jesus Christ. The Bible says the resurrected Jesus is our hope of glory. Lift your hands and thank him right now. Somebody give praise to God in here. If I could just get five people to say, praise the Lord. 1 Peter 1, 3, the NIV says. Is that you, Kyle? Yes. Okay. Kyle. Just mouth it and I'll speak. <laughs> praise be to God and the Father. Kyle, come on. Of our Lord Jesus Christ, in his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. New birth, new hope. Why? Because the tomb is empty. Hallelujah. Romans 5.10, Kyle. Romans 5.10. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved, saved by, by his, his life. life. So we were reconciled. How, how does that work? We've been reconciled to God by the death of his son. See, Jesus dying, his body dying, paid the wage of sin. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So Jesus dying on the cross, his body dying on the cross, paid that wage. And that's why it says we're reconciled. When the wage is paid, the debt is paid, then you're reconciled with the person you own the debt to. Being reconciled, we shall be, being even more reconciled, we shall be saved by his resurrection, by his life. Yes, the empty tomb assures us of our salvation and that we have a hope and a future. Because he lives, we shall live also. That's John 14, 19. A person, listen to me, a person cannot Truly be saved. Amen. We have any saved people here? A person cannot be truly saved. You're going to get mad at me now. A person cannot be truly saved. I challenge your salvation. And put it on the foundation of this. Do you believe that Jesus is living? Do you believe that he is the resurrection and the life? Do you believe he was raised from the dead? And that he is Lord. If you do, then you're truly saved. Romans 10.9, please. Romans 10.9. A person cannot be saved unless they embrace the truth that Jesus was raised from the dead. If you reject it, you cannot be saved. Because that's what saves you. <laughs> Go ahead. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, Amen. and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the believe dead. Believe in your heart what, Kyle? That Come God on, hath, Kyle! That God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Wow. You see uh, the role it plays? That truth plays a major role in your salvation. Embracing the truth that Jesus is alive. He was raised from the dead. Hallelujah. Oh, I love John eleven twenty five 25, and 26. It says, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Then he says, do you believe this? Do you believe this? See, it's pivotal to our salvation. Do you know the empty tomb? The empty tomb proves that Jesus is the Christ 
the son of the living God, and the empty tomb validates the word of God to be absolutely true because all through the word of God, it said a Messiah would come, die, and be raised on the third day. Jesus himself predicted it to the T. He'd go to the priests and he'd go to the scribes. Then they would sentence, sentence him to dead. He would go to the Romans and they would, they would whip him and scourge him. Then he would go to the cross and die. He predicted every bit of that. That he'd be raised on the third day. The empty tomb means the Bible, the word of God is true. It's true. It's true. Forever true. Now. We have Bibles, hundreds of them, nice ones. This is what I was thinking. Can we talk? This is what I was thinking. Many of you are going to family get-togethers or you're having people over to your house, whatever it is. Why don't you take several Bibles with you? They're all packaged. They're brand new. They would make a wonderful Easter gift. When you go to somebody's house, take a Bible and give it to them as a gift on Easter, on Resurrection Day. Give it to your grandkids. Give it to your cousins, whoever you're meeting with. I'm telling you, the word of God will save their life. Amen. Amen. So feel free to take all you want. There's a precious businessman in our church that buys them by the hundreds to get the word of God out. I said, well, how much do you want to sell them for? Can we make back some of the money for you? He says, freely I have received, freely I give. Won't take a penny for the word of God. Amen. So our gift to you, take several and give them to family and friends. Right? Was that a good idea? Let's talk. You like that idea? Also, thank you for bringing your food items. You brought your food items uh, once a month, first Sunday of every month we bring, and the tables are overflowing, falling off on the ground, all over the place. It's the most I've ever seen come in. A miracle, Easter, food abundance. Thank you for bringing that. Thank you for helping others. It replenishes our food closet next door. Literally uh, 50, 60, 70, up to 100 bags go out a month to people that need help, that get a little short toward the end of the month or, or in the mid-month. That happens to all of us. Come on now. Don't shout me down. Also, you'll see another table set up because I had the people next door. I said, well, I'll tell you what. You go set up a table in the lobby, and you bring bags of food over. And if anybody in the service this morning needs a little bit of help, they can grab a bag of, a bag of groceries to take with them as they leave. If you need a little bit of help, nothing wrong with that. We all need a little bit of help. And Jesus is here to help us. Amen. So if you need some help, grab a bag on your way out. Somebody will, if you need prayer, somebody will pray with you out there as well. It, it's beautiful. It's beautiful what this body of believers are doing for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, it's just not all talk. It's doing as well. It's not just hearing the word, but doing the word. That's true religion, Jesus said. Hallelujah. So we learned something. That the cross, one more, oh, one more scripture. After that crosswalk, I'm telling you, four miles for this kid. Uh, amen. I'm moving slow. All right. Look at this powerful verse. Romans 1, 3, and 4. And I need the uh, praise and worship band to come up, please. Now, we've learned a few things this morning before we read this. Uh, Kyle, we learned a few things, what the empty tomb means. It means Jesus is alive, number one. Number two, it means God's word is true. Remember, we talked about that. It is written. Is it, is it written? He was raised according to scriptures. He was crucified according to scriptures. Jesus foretold it. The, pro the prophets of old, Old Testament scriptures, I could give you dozens. 
that said a Messiah would come, would die and be raised. Job, the book of Job, the oldest book in the Bible thousands and thousands of years ago, says, I know my Redeemer lives. Woo! Wow! Now, we also learn that our salvation is assured and that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. It proves it. He's the Christ. Romans 1, 3, and 4 says, Concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, uh -huh. and declared to be the Son of God. Now stop. Kyle, read it again, and just go a little slower. And declared to be the Son of... Go ahead. And declared to be the Son of God with power. So he's, he's been declared to be the Son of God with power. Go ahead. According to the spirit of holiness... By the resurrection from the dead. So because of the resurrection, it proves he is the Son of God. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is the Christ. He's the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus is God. There, I said it. Hallelujah. He is the Lord, the Messiah. Put your faith in him. All right, let's stand together, please, on this Easter morning, on this dawn. <laughs> you know, when Jesus, after his resurrection, showed himself to his disciples, Thomas was not there. So later when Thomas came back, of course, the disciples said, we've seen him, we've seen him, we've touched him. And Thomas would not believe that he was raised from the dead. So Jesus appeared to Thomas and says, Thomas, touch me. Put your hand in my hand. Put your hand in my side. You know what he said? He said, stop doubting and believe. Man, I just felt the Holy Ghost go through me like a knife. Stop doubt. That's, that's a word for somebody here that's been wishy-washy on the fence. Yes, and then no. Yes, and then no. Come on. Stop doubting and believe on this Easter morning, on this resurrection, resurrection Sunday. Believe that Jesus has been raised from the dead. He's my God. He's your God. He's my Lord. He's your Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord, and ye shall be saved. And if anybody adds anything to that, let God be true and every man a liar. It's not about joining a church. It's about calling on the name of the Lord. Now, now bow your heads with me. Just bow your heads with me right now. Is there somebody here this morning? that would raise their hand and say, I believe the tomb is empty. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe. And I open my heart and ask Jesus to come in. I see hands going up right now already. Put your hand up if you, if you want to open your heart. If you want a transformed life, today, this morning, raise your hand right now. I see hands going up all over the sanctuary. Come on. This is the day of salvation. You'll never regret it. I promise you. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection. Because he lives, you will live also. When you ask Jesus to come into your life, he in fact does. The Bible says he dwells within you. I stand at the door of your heart knocking. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Those of you raising your hands, if you mean it, pray this prayer with me right now. In fact, everyone in this room, let's pray it together. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus forgive me my sins. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me Cleanse with your precious blood. With your precious here it is. I confess with my mouth, I 
confess with my mouth Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is I Lord. believe in my heart. I believe in my heart. God raised him from the dead. God raised him from the dead. Now according to scripture. Now according to scripture. According to your word. According to your I am word, saved. I am born saved, again. Born again. Made again, new. Made in new, Jesus name. Jesus amen and amen. amen. Somebody amen. clap. Come on. Somebody give it up for Jesus. Now, there's a couple things you need to do. A lot of hands went up. Number one, get a Bible if you don't have one and start reading God's Word. Number two, start praying. Simply, just talk to God. And you'll find out. He'll talk to you. Get into church. And I think I know where a good one is. But get into a church where they believe in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And then on your way out, I want you to tell somebody. Anybody. Just grab a hold of anybody walking down the aisle. Hey, I just received Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. Come on. For we're not ashamed of the gospel. For it's the power of God for the salvation of one who believes. What an Easter day. What an Easter service. A dozen people receiving the Lord. I mean, come on. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, I want to hear God's not dead like never before. Come on. Let love explode. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. I love the Lord to see a revolution somehow. Let love explode and bring the dead to life. I love the And this world I overcome My God's not dead, he's surely alive Living on the inside, roaring like a lion God's not dead, he's surely alive Living on the inside, roaring like a lion Roaring, roaring, roaring like a lion Let hope arise. Let hope arise and make the darkness hide. My faith is dead. I need a resurrection somehow. Now I'm lost in your freedom. And this world I my God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, rolling like a lion. God's not dead, he's surely alive. He's living on the inside, rolling like a lion. He's rolling, rolling, rolling like a lion. He's rolling, rolling, rolling like a lion. Take it home. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. We love you.